Hey YouTube, it's Marita and welcome to another edition of the Nurse Lounge. And in today's edition, I am actually in my office at the moment, but I wanted to come into you and talk about specifically the different kinds of nurses or nursing in the OB realm. So as you know, I am a mother or OB nurse. Um, I do OB, GYN, Well Baby Nursery, um, and I'm a nurse educator. So I wanted to take some time. I saw this video before on someone else's channel and I thought that would be a great video to do on my channel because of the fact that, um, truth be told, the way she described it is not accurate for every hospital. So I wanted to come on here and kind of just piggyback off the video that I saw, give you a breakdown of what OBGYN and different aspects of nursing really is. Um, in the OB realm so that you have a better understanding and see how it may fit into your facility or facility that you typically um, work at. So if you want to see what I'm talking about, please stay tuned. Welcome back. My name is Dr. Marita P. I'm a registered nurse. However, I am a nurse educator and I'm coming to you as a nurse educator. My background is OBGYN, Well Baby Nursery, and I just want to come in here and just simply kind of go through again, like I said in the intro, specifically what each area of nursing um, in the OB realm truly is and what it is to me. And then you'll have a better idea. So I'm sitting in front of my window here in my office. So if it's bright, that is why. Um, so if it, you see uh, the light shift or change, that is why. All right. So with that being said, let's jump right on in. We're going to start off first with OBGYN. So an OBGYN nurse is a nurse who works on a floor that she, typically is a she, obviously men can work on there too, but mostly females work OB. Um, but typically OBGYN is a floor that encompasses both the mom component and the GYN component. So on an OB floor, you're going to have typically women who have um, had babies. Uh, they could be at different, you know, in terms of how many weeks gestation. It just depends on the hospital and how big the hospital is, how big the unit is. But for my specific hospital that I was working at, I worked on a 24 bed postpartum unit. However, it did encompass GYN patients. GYN means gynecological or gynecology patients. Okay. So these are women with female issues. Speaking specifically of something like hysterectomies, um, bladder prolapse, uterine prolapse, just feminine female issues that we tend to have as we get older that we need to get fixed. A lot of hysterectomies, a lot of you may get tubal ligations, but a lot of those patients actually go home same day. So a lot of your GYN issues typically don't stay no more than one to two days. They have either like a vaginal hysterectomy or abdominal hysterectomy or some, you know, tubes tied, maybe an ectopic pregnancy. Sometimes those patients actually go to a med surge floor, but a lot of times the OB GYN doctor wants to have all their patients on the same floor so they can make rounds in one place. So I wanted to make sure you understood that GYNs can go to a med surge floor. But again, a lot of doctors want to keep their patients all on one floor if they can, um, if there's room. So they put them on the GYN, I mean, the OB floor with their other patients. So you may see that. Or you may see a GYN patient on a med surge floor, which is typically where they would go if they were not on a OB floor. So that is what OB GYN is. She is someone who takes care of not only moms, but she also takes care of females um, who are not pregnant, they're not there for pregnancy, they're there due to a female issue. So something that that doctor would take care of, like I said, a bladder prolapse, um, sometimes they'll do a uterine prolapse, um, ectopic pregnancies, um, hysterectomies, things like that. So the next thing I want to talk about is antepartum. An antepartum unit is specifically for those people, anti means what? Think about that. So when we talk about antepartum, that means they have not had their babies yet. They are still pregnant. And so those patients come to the hospital sometimes because maybe they have what's called um, pyelonephritis, which is a kidney issue, okay? Or they have, um, what is it called when they um, throw up all the time? I can't think of the word right now. It's just left me. Um, 
I'll come back to that. But if you think of it, put it in the comments. I can't think of it. But basically when they throw up, um, shoot, hyperemesis. That's what it is. Hyperemesis, gravitum. So when they're throwing up all the time, they have to be admitted to the hospital for fluids and to watch things like that, make sure they're not losing too much weight. These are antepartum issues, or maybe they're preterm in terms of they their body is ready to go have a baby, but it's too soon. So preterm labor. Sometimes those are stabilized in labor and delivery and then sent to the antepartum unit to be monitored until whenever they decide they either want to send them home or whatever it happens to be. Antepartum again means that you're still pregnant and that you still need care, but it's care that you cannot get at home. Sometimes they're just watching you to make sure that you um, are um, doing well with the pregnancy, that they want to do non-stress tests on you. They want to make sure that you are, um, the baby is, um, they're doing, make sure the baby has is gaining weight or make sure the baby is, you know, just basically growing. Maybe you're spotting, maybe you're having some bleeding issues and they want to watch you for that to make sure that you're not going to miscarry or lose the baby. So there's various reasons that you could, that you could be um, uh, in the hospital as an antepartum patient. Now, I want to say that when it comes to these patients, depending on the hospitals, those could be wall one floor. On my floor, I took care of antepartum patients, postpartum patients, and GYN patients on my floor. I took care of high risk patients on my floor. So Every hospital, it does not set the same way, set up the same way when it comes to that. Every hospital is different in terms of what they call those things and how they actually set the floor up to be. So on my floor, I did OB, GYN, and antepartum all on the same floor. So I would have somebody who had a hysterectomy, a C-section, a vaginal delivery, and someone who may be 35 weeks pregnant who is there because of pyelonephritis. That's just an example type of thing. So again, that's what those are. The next one I want to talk about is mother baby care. So mother baby basically means couplet care. It's the same thing as couplet care. And that means one nurse is taking care of the mom and the baby and her baby. Um, so that's couplet care. That's that's pretty much what it is. Mom, One nurse is taking care of the mom and her baby. And depending on how many babies she has, let's say she has twins, sometimes the mom will take care of um, or the nurse will take care of a mom and her twins, but sometimes she has to be, they have to be split up. They try to keep them together, but it just depends on the patient load and the census for that day. Now, typically even on, on floors like that, you can still have a GYN surgery on that floor. So you'll have maybe a couple of couplets and you may have a GYN surgery patient as well. So the ratio, um, let me go back to the ratios. Typically for OBGYN where I work, where I work, okay, specifically, it is a one to six ratio. When it comes to antepartums, it's still a one to six ratio. When it comes to couplet care, it is a one to three, one to four ratio, meaning you could have um, three couplets, which is three moms and babies, which is six patients, or you can have four couplets, four moms and babies, um, four couplets, which is a total of eight patients. Now at my facility, we did not do couplet care. I hate couplet care. I hate it, hate it, hate it. We didn't do couplet care. We only did um, postpartum or OBGYN. So with that being said, the hospitals that I've worked at who do do couplet care, that's how they do it, three to four couplet. If you have less than that, then sometimes you will end up with a GYN patient. So that's just kind of how that works. Or let's say the baby has to go to NICU. So you wouldn't have that baby. You would just have the mom if that was the case. And then they will give you another like GYN surgery to kind of fill your load up. Postpartum. Postpartum is exactly what it is. You just take care of postpartum moms. That's it. You don't take care of no babies, just the moms, just the adults. That is all you take care of. And me, that's how our unit was set up as a postpartum unit. However, even though it's set up as postpartum, I still took care of GYN surgeries and antepartums as well. So again, don't think just because your, your unit is set up a certain way that you are closed off to other um, types of OB patients. It just depends on how your hospital runs your unit. Again, I took care of antepartum, GYN, postpartum. I took care of babies sometimes when I got floated to the nursery and we did float. So with that being said, you still took care of everything. Postpartum, the ratio is one to six. You have one patient, one nurse per six patients. Um, depending on the hospital or where you work at, sometimes you may have to take seven. Um, but for the most part, our ratio was one to six. I refuse to take over six. That was just me. Now let's go to the baby side. You have nursery, which is the well baby nursery. That means the baby is usually full term, which is 37 plus weeks. 
and 37 completed weeks and um and above you have at least for us 37 completed weeks um so you have that these babies are not sick they usually stay with their moms they uh they do have that period of time where they're transitioning in terms of getting that initial bath and those um, shots and things like that, and just being monitored for, you know, after they were born. But outside of that, they are with the moms primarily, um, but there's still a full fledged nursery, meaning we have a nursery nurse. So with the couplet care, mother, baby, there's not a nursery nurse because that one nurse takes care of mom and baby. Okay. And I'm back new outfit, new day. I had to stop the video and I had to work. So now I'm back in my office, different day, different hairstyle, different everything. But let's go ahead and continue this video on the different types of positions or places that you could be in the OB realm. So we last left off at nursery and I finished the nursery, but I want to talk about the transition nurse. So when you have a transition nurse, her only responsibility is to go what we call catch the babies, which means they go to the deliveries and they do that initial two hours in terms of doing the baby's transition period of time. That is all they do. So they go to the deliveries, they do the vital signs, they do the initial assessments, they do the initial, um, they do the initial um, medications, which is usually Hep B, erythromycin, and vitamin K injections. And the, the erythromycin are drops that goes in the eyes, and then the Hep B and the uh, vitamin K are injections that the baby get. And they usually are responsible for that. They give the babies the bath. They just kind of monitor their vital signs. They do their Ballard scoring. They um, make sure the baby uh, does the initial feeding in terms of either breastfeeding in that golden hour that they do skin to skin or bottle feeding when that time comes. So the transition nurse, her only responsibilities are to, or, or him, if it's going to be a male nurse, um, are to basically transition that baby once the baby is transitioned, that two hours is up and everything is fine with the baby, then that baby goes to the couplet mom, like the mother baby nurse. So like the the mother baby nurse will already have the um, mom typically by then, or she'll be getting them soon. And then she'll get report from the transition nurse on the baby. So then that way that mom has that couplet, if that makes sense. All right, next we're gonna go to NICU. So when it comes to a NICU mom, or NICU mom, NICU baby, these babies are sick. These babies, NICU is called the NICU because it is the neonatal intensive care unit. So just like an adult ICU, we have a baby ICU, which means the baby is sick. The baby can go to the ICU for various reasons. It could be because the baby was born too early, like 24, 25 weeks. It could be because the baby can't not maintain blood sugars, cannot maintain its body temperature. Um, it has congenital defects. It has other issues. But anything that takes it outside the realm of a whale baby um, typically will go to the NICU. Now, there are different levels of NICUs, and I won't get there. I won't talk about that here in this video. However, just know there's different levels of NICU, like level one, level two, level three NICUs. And that is based off of what type of care they can provide for that baby. If they require more extensive care, they will go to a different kind of NICU. So it just depends on the hospital to know what kind of NICU it happens to be. Um, but just know there's a NICU. And the baby is seen by a neonatologist or a NNP, a neonatal nurse practitioner. So you could have one of those that see the babies, neonatologist, which is a doctor who happens to be specialized in sick babies, neonatal care, um, typically. And then you have, of course, the NMP. And then, of course, that's the providers. And then the nurses would be a NICU nurse. Typically, the NICU nurse and the nursery nurse typically can be the same person, meaning that she typically can be can work in both areas. Maybe tonight they come in and work or today they come in and work and they're working NICU today and they come in and work the next shift and they work nursery that day. It just depends on the facility. Some some nurses are not trained that way. Some nurses are just NICU nurses and some nurses are just well baby nurses. So it all depends on the facility. So be mindful of that. The last um, area of OB that I want to talk about is labor and delivery. Labor and delivery is exactly what you think it is. You are the one who takes care of the mom and the baby, but the baby's on the inside for the moment. And um, you're the one who assists in just laboring her down 
and making sure that everything is well with mom and baby. You're putting on the TOCO, the transducers, you're putting on all these different things. You're monitoring mom's vital signs. You are doing um, the baby, monitoring the baby too in terms of the electronic uh, fetal monitoring the strip, as we say, so that you can see what's going on with the baby. Um, but you're doing all those different things. And of course, if the doctor doesn't get there in time, there are nurses who have to catch the baby, so we say. So labor and delivery nurses do it all. They are the, really the critical care. Labor and delivery is considered the critical care of OB. So that is where um, if you have a truly high risk situation with the mom, um, your magnesium sulfate patients, they're gonna be in typically labor and delivery still. Your hemorrhage patients, now the ones who hemorrhage, they can be actually anywhere. They can actually be in um, postpartum because I take care of postpartum patients that are hemorrhaged all the time. Um, so we, we do all that. Now, that's all I want to really say about that. But specifically what I did was I did OB, GYN, antepartum, and high-risk OB care. Again, there are different hospitals that have different units for different things. Sometimes the hospital's so large that they'll have like a women's hospital. So they'll have the whole hospital be a women's hospital. They have one floor that's labor and delivery, one floor is antepartum, one floor that's either mother, baby, or postpartum. Then they'll have a high risk OB floor even for that. In my hospital, we did all of those on one floor. Oh, and then they have a GYN floor, gynecological care. So. Um, when I talk about OBGYN earlier, the GYN is female surgeries, like I said, but they sometimes have a floor specifically for that, and that is all they do. So, or GYNs will go to a regular med surge floor. It just depends on the hospital. So, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video where I've kind of broke down the different parts or different areas of OB, and I can't think of anything else in terms of nurse wise. Of course, you have scrub techs and things like that. I won't get into that the here. Um, typically most, um, hospitals will have RNs and registered nurses in OB. However, there are some hospitals who may still employ LPNs that work in an OB realm. But for the most part, most hospitals are going to RNs and your magnet hospitals are only going to baccalaureate BSN RNs because of course they're magnet status. So be mindful of that when you're looking for an OB job. So hopefully that has helped with breaking down the different areas of OB and what we do. However, I want to say that, you know, if you have questions still, definitely comment those below because I will love to answer those questions. And now that you've seen this video, we are now over 2,000 uh, subscribers. And I want to thank you all so much for liking, comment, sharing my videos. We are at over 2,000. And because we're over 2,000, we are going to actually start going live sometime soon. I will actually put a poll up or do a video to see kind of how y'all want to do things. But I thank you so much for doing that. I have to kind of get back to work. So definitely follow me on IG. I will have that somewhere on the screen. And thank you again. And until the next time, you all take care. Bye-bye.